The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. All right, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. Well, I'll give you early happy new year to everyone. Oh, dear, my alert's going off already. I want to talk about the Apple to start off with. Just give me a second. I need to, uh, I need to turn this off here because we're getting really close to the old British pound number. Just give me a second here, and I'll be right with you. Uh, I think that'll do it. I hope it will anyway. Oh, maybe not. Oh, dear. Bear with me one second, boys and girls. I hit the wrong button. Yeah, I did. Just a second. Give me one second. Uh, true R. Okay. I posted the chart here of Apple. This is the long-term weekly chart. Uh, the reason why, folks, you know, we started talking about that trade of the year. Uh, or late, uh, early last week, and then they, uh, I said if I had to do one, that would be it. And then one thing led to another. I got some emails saying, well, if you feel that strongly about it, why don't you do it? So I said, well, I'm going to call it a trade, but it's not the trade of the year. Folks, this is the chart of Apple. No one in their right mind would sell Apple here at 291 and a half, which we decided to sell it at with a stop at 299. And the reason for it, folks, is that it's a double ABCD pattern. It's at a 1.618 expansion, and it's a weekly chart. These numbers, although they are not perfect, they work a lot of the time. That's the whole thing. It's all about probability, and it's all about risk control. If you look very closely to back in December of 2000, and uh, excuse me, in August of um, of last year, of 2018, August of 2018, we were setting at a 1.618 expansion, and uh, the, it was at $230 a share. And not, not much happened differently over the next six months, but it dropped $100 a share down to 240 Now we have an ABCD up at the 1.618. Dan Huber is one of the best traders in Chicago. He runs Lynn Financial. Uh, he writes a letter once in a while. He usually does a year-end thing. And he writes an interesting thing today. And this is not about Apple, but it says when everybody's thinking the same thing, there's nobody thinking. Now, I don't know anything about thinking. You know, that's the that's least, least of my hard jobs. I look at little bar charts, and that's what I try to look at. But this stock has everything going for it that could possibly be good. They have more cash than God, and she's not even shopping this Christmas. They have free advertising. They have a great product line. Okay, they're, they're the number one stock in the world. They're the most expensive stock in the world. Everybody owns the stock. Everybody loves the stock. Of all the analysts on the street, there's not even one that has a cautionary note about Apple. And here I am, a little old cowboy out there in Tucson, Arizona. I'm willing to whisk eight bucks because I think something's going to happen. And I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but if it does, and if it does, it's going to pay off pretty good. That's all I know is the risk-reward on this is pretty good. So that's all I'm saying. You know, of those, I've done 14 trades of the year. This is the last one. And so this is the 15th, and uh, of the, of the, you never lost any money on any of those 14 trades. Sometimes you didn't make any money, but you didn't lose any. 11 of them were home runs, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Okay, look, look, here's what's going on really important right now, folks. Let's just give it to you uh, from the as I see it right now. Here is the British pound. We were just talking about it making new highs. The euro has already made the 61% retracement last night at 120.09. That was it. To the tick. Bada bing, bada boom. To the exact tick. We just made the 382 retracement in the British pound. To the tick. Bada bing, bada boom. Whether that means anything, I don't know. I'm going to slow down here just a minute here, boy. Boys and girls, uh, Bill Meridian will try to be our guest today at 9:30, and I have another special guest right after the first of the year, right from the old foundation from the study of cycles. Richard Moki is in retirement, but he's going to come on and chat with us about cycles, which will be a lot of fun to listen to him, and that'll be very interesting. Now, something else is really big happening in the markets, folks. Here is a hourly chart of the 
U.S. Treasury bond, okay? Now, look at this, folks. We are down almost two handles from Friday's close. That's a $2,000 move overnight, well, in a day and a half. This is, uh, this is not good, folks, for Treasury bonds. <clears throat> Excuse me one second. They have been trying to feed us Treasury bonds as filet mignon, and they taste more, taste more like tripe. I mean, these are not acting very bullish, folks. The rate uh, has risen to risen, risen. <laughs> has risen to 1.9% now in the Treasury bond. Remember, 4% was was normal for many, many years. Um, I don't know anything about things about this, but Bill Meridian is going to talk to us about the debt problem in China. You're going to be, uh, hopefully, we get him on for the whole amount because uh, he's got so much, so much great stuff. But uh, he is going to knock your socks off today, folks. He really is. So I, I hope you stay with us uh, and listen to what he has to say. And hopefully we'll have him on because sometimes there's some technical difficulties here and there. But that neither is either here nor there. Okay, the main things this week as we come into the new year. And a lot of times the, the currencies make some pretty significant swings during the new year and stuff like that. So we want to pay attention to that, especially since that euro hit 120.09. That means that the dollar index is making a double bottom down there that we that we talked about before. You know, we had a little bit of a rally, then the pullback making new lows. That's why it's so very, very important, because if it doesn't, doesn't turn from here, that means the U.S. dollar is going to continue down. But look look where we are now, folks. We're down to point D again. Let me just get this up here so you can see it. We're down here to this 96 and change because we've made a new low. All right, that's what we, sh which we should have did. And as that low is being made now here at 96.20, the euro is making the exact 61% retracement to the tick at 1.2009. Folks, that market is a trillion dollar market. I mean, that, that dwarfs the bond market, it dwarfs the stock market, dwarfs any market. But uh, it's a very big market. So it's hitting that number, so we gotta respect that number because that's what we look at here. We look at numbers and ratios and that's what we're watching. Another, <laughs> another question, ask, uh, what is the probability of this Apple trade working? I don't know what the probability is. All I know is the risk involved in it. Most of the trades, let's just give it a 50-50 chance. All right, folks, if you've got a 50-50 chance of winning something, but it's going to pay you four times what that coin toss is, isn't that a pretty good deal? That's that's what I'm trying to do is when I'm looking at that. Now, let's get back with the rest of the program that we usually do. Let's take a look here at the DAX Daily here. Let's get this up here so we'll be able to see it here and uh, we'll be able to take a look at it. Oh, <laughs> all right. Someone else asked me to do this. I don't particularly want to, but I'm going to. This is from uh, one. This is why I teach, folks. This is from my, my friend over in Italy. I've been trading for, for over 20 years now. He says some nice things about me, but the most important thing is he started learning back in, in 2002, and he's still going, going strong and doing well. So the key to this is just don't stick with it. You're going to make it if you stick with it. That's the whole key. So please remember that. That's the key to this. Stick with it and you'll make it. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and we have Victor from New Jersey on the line. Victor, are you there? Yeah, how you doing? I put the Fibonacci retracements on. A 0.618 brings Apple down to 230, 2.44. Is that your first price objective? There's some gaps, or like, what, what's your objective if you're going to go well, short this? Well, the first, the first objective that would be a very good one, 232. If it goes from 290 to 232, that's 60 points. That's pretty good. But I would be watching the 382 retracement, which takes it down to about 275. That's the first one. If we get there very quickly, Victor, that will tell us that something is. You know, that's going to correct. There's nothing, but there might not be anything wrong with the stock, but it's just going to correct. That's uh, yeah, saying, 275 uh, is taxes? the first. That's why people I have, right now. I, 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 what, oh, what I have. You could pick it. You could pick anything you want uh, that could happen. Maybe a key executives leave, you know, uh, China uh, disallows them, you know, anything could happen. Uh, who knows? I, yeah. I don't know. I'm just looking at the charts and it may or may not work. What about that? What about BP? I'm looking to buy BP, the stock, because it pays a really good dividend. Should I wait for Is it oil look like a good buy right here? You know, BP Amico, it pays like a 6% dividend. I, I'm really not involved in that, Victor, so I can't help you very much. I'd be really careful now because people are searching for higher yields, and yields are going to be going higher and not lower. So as long as you get really good quality BP stuff, AMICO, AAA. Stock. Would you touch oil Yes, right I know now? that. I know. Yeah, BP, I understand that, but I, I don't. I, I don't follow it, but I'm not bullish oil here. I think oil's going to have trouble here at $62 a, a barrel. I'm trying to beat what I should do. That's my two cents worth. Or short Apple. Apple's way overbought on oh, our well, I short, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just a little bit overbought. Right. Now, if you, if you short Apple, you have to put a stop at 299 And, you know, you could be there today. I don't know. But that's a that's all I'm looking at. That's all, all right. you know. That's all I can tell you. Oh, today's the first day it's not up pre-market, which is I'm very suspicious. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. You have a great day and have a good New Year. All right, so, Victor, believe it or not, people said, am I responsible for it being lower or today? And believe me, I can trust you. I'm not. So <laughs> happy New Year to you, my no, friend. No, your numbers are good. Yeah, yeah, maybe you hit the money this time and you can retire. Bye. Right. Take care. Yeah, what, once in a while. You bet. bet. Okay, folks, we'll keep looking. Looking out. I had another thing that I wanted to. Uh, we, I showed you the DAX. I wanted to show you the FTSE on the daily because we've completed a really beautiful, beautiful pattern here. If you'll be able to see, hold on one second. Uh, 
And we're having a, having a question from someone about the uh, crude volatility index has something to do with the price of crude. Well, it has to do with the volatility of crude, but I don't know what the rest of it is. Now, here's the FTSE. You'll notice that we made a double top here, the, here, the FTSE, a perfect ABCD. I mean, you know, exactly perfect. And, you know, I don't know. Folks, you know, <laughs> the, the main reason why I didn't do trade of the year is because of the, the, the millions of questions. Where's it going to go? How, how much, you know, how much should I risk in, risk in my portfolio? Folks, I don't know those things. I, I really don't. All I do is look at the patterns and I try to give a rough assessment of what I I think is uh, going to be. When I see something that's very clear, then that's uh, that's what I try to do. And you know, you, you, believe me, the whole key to this business, folks. The whole key is, the whole key to this, is the the best loser wins. The best loser wins. In other words, the guy that loses the least is probably going to win. So that's what you really want to try to do is to do something like that. Now, I wanted to show you something here. This is a very very uh, long term goes back a year in the uh, in the euro. Just give me one second to get it up here. I just want to show you what somebody does just to give you a 10 for this is the euro. <clears throat> and all these uh, you'll see these trend lines. These are valid what they call valid trend line breaks. And you can see that it gets you on the right side of the market. This is some of the things that they use in Ensign. But the reason why I'm bringing this to your attention, folks, is I want you to look at the blue line there on the far right where last night we were trading at 119.12. The high today was 120.09, I believe. That was the exact 61% retracement. We're now 20 pips below that level. Now, does that mean that's going to be a high? All I know is a high for early this morning. <clears throat> so that's that's really what I'm watching here. So pay close attention. We had a really strong day on uh, Friday, but remember Friday was a uh, – uh, this is holiday week, so you're still – we're going to be getting a lot of holiday stuff going on. That won't end until next week. Then things will be back to normal as we come into uh, next week's trading. So this is why it's so key here uh, in the euro and also in the British pound. They're all doing the same thing. And that's what we're trying to do. Yes, Tucker, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to give you opportunities <coughs> to, to see the, of the patterns that we're looking for. And, you know, I only get you for, uh, for 46 minutes, uh, 40 36 minutes a day. So we'll see. Yes, the grains are acting a little better. They're, they're hanging in there pretty good, whether it's related to anything going on to that China stuff or not. I have no clue. I, I really don't. I really don't. But the main things to me, looking at the market today and, and listening to what Bill's going to be talking to us about, hopefully here uh, in the next uh, uh, next segment, it's going to be uh, going to be very, very interesting to see and he will be with us i just chatted with him so we'll be we'll be in great shape here uh to take a look at it so anyway those are just a few of the things but the bonds being so weak is one thing and number two is the fact that the euro and the pound have hit those exact numbers and that that to me means a means a great deal from a technical perspective so that's uh, the main thing all right, let's keep moving on here. Let's take a look here at the old, get back to the old cryptocurrencies for a second. Let's get this up here. This is the uh, chart, shorter term chart of uh, going over the last six months of uh, Bitcoin. And as you can see, that number we made, 6,400, folks, that 6,400 number was a major daily long-term daily going back uh, quite a bit. And it was also a 382 on an error on an arithmetic chart, so logarithmic chart. So a very, very important date to see whether it's going. Hopefully I'll get these uh, raspy frogs out of my throat here in the next couple of days. Uh, I won't be with you guys uh, on Thursday, but I will be with you on Friday. And uh, we'll see uh, how the new year comes out. I've got some things that we're planning. I think it'll be, it'll be really interesting to look at as we go through some of these things. But the grains are looking a little bit better. Uh, I, I think we, 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 we're with some really, really key points here. Let's take a look at the corn here because corn has a really, really nice little bullish pattern here. If you take a look at it, uh, this is the uh, March corn. We're over into March now. And you can see how we've been at this really, really tight trading range here for the last eight days, and we closed the upper end of it. That's telling you that market wants to go higher, folks. 
It really does because you you came you came down you almost made a double bottom at 90% and now you've popped up and it's starting to move and it's moving. Uh, this isn't the time of the year that you usually get seasonal strength because it's the holiday season and it's also uh, you know hedging. You know they're 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 bringing in the crops and a lot of these guys are going to have a hard time storing it because there's so much corn out there. But the market's still moving higher. And the technical part of it tells you that that means that you're probably going to go up in corn. That's what it looks like. Your risk here is extremely small. You've been in the five cent trading range for nine trading days. My gosh, you, have to, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure that out. If it goes below the end of that range, there's more selling. If it goes above the range, there's more buying. That's, uh, that's really the only thing you have to ask is look at that. You don't have to listen to all the news and stuff. So whether that means anything or not, I don't know. But we're going to have Bill Meridian on at the break here, so pay attention. He's got some really blockbuster stuff, in my opinion. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're talking with Bill Meridian Cycles Research out of Austria. Bill, how are you doing? And Happy New Year to you, my friend. Oh, pretty good, but I'm in uh, my home in New Jersey <clears throat> in the middle of a rainstorm. Oh. Oh, you sound your voice, and I, you, we must go to the same voice coach. I know <laughs> I've had a sore throat for for a couple of weeks. Listen, Bill, I, I don't want to keep you very long because I know your your voice is a little off. But uh, no, by that's goodness, okay. 
Uh, when I saw what you were sh uh, getting ready to show us today, I really, uh, I was really excited. Uh, mm -hmm. Bill, why don't you tell us? I, I, let's just start with the cycle schedule here, and you can, uh, you can uh, just continue with that. How's that? Sure, whatever you want to do. Um, well, I think uh, this is uh, not. Um, <clears throat> by the way, this is new. This voice just since I woke up 30 minutes ago. So. Um, uh, I think we're in, in a, a real change here. My guess is the market is topping uh, and will be lower by the end of January. And it is not going to be as robust a year as last year. Uh, the cycle schedule. Well, first, the 21-day cycle expires on January 10th. That's the Sun-Mercury conjunction in Capricorn. And um, it is not – the market doesn't necessarily drop after that point. It rises 84, 85 percent of the time up into that date from three weeks before. So that will be gone the 10th. Then the end of the month uh, period, the end of the month strength which runs from about December 15th to January 11th. That peaks out, obviously, on the 11th. Then the weekly cycle, which we'll look at, will top on the 10th. And the monthly cycle tops on the 13th. Now, the 12-year cycle is in a down phase. That means Jupiter's in Capricorn. That declines into February. That one I don't mention very much because it's 12 years long. It doesn't give a signal that often. The 1.6-year cycle, which is actually a bit longer, which is Mars through the signs, actually topped back in October. But the solar cycle is much more powerful than that. So the solar cycle will be kicking out here. And more than more important than anything, 2020 is a year ending in a zero. And such years have the most bearish returns. So let's go down one slide. And that okay. is, that's an actual graphic projected on this year. You'll see that, that uh, the effect is exact on the 10th and the market tops a few days later so that's about the 13th so that is the dewey mm -hmm. effect it's a sun conjunct mercury and capricorn discovered by ed dewey so if we go one more now you see the weekly and the monthly cycles the weekly on the top hitting a peak around the 10th and the monthly on the bottom hitting a peak on the 13th so for the second half of the month they'll both be declining now let's go. These are the most important uh, cycles, these two in the next group. Now, the one-year cycle you see at the top, that's obviously that's the annual cycle in any year. The four-year cycle is the election year cycle, and right now we're in the uh, election year, which is the second strongest cycle of the four years in the election cycle. But look at the, um, uh, look at the green cycle, which is the 10-year. Uh, You'll notice it's down all year. Years ending in zero are the weakest in the decennial pattern for some strange reason. Just look back at 1980, 1990, 2000. So that, plus the two cycles we just looked at, is enough to get me bearish. And then at the bottom, you see the, at the blue line is the addition of the 1-4 and the 10-year cycle. So we had, as you remember, the last time you had me on the show, I pointed out this 21-day influence of Sun conjunct Mercury and Capricorn. And uh, we've had that, and uh, we had a number of bullish influences, and they're all peaking out here between the 10th and the 13th, and then these bearish ones take over. And to give you some idea of years ending in zero, we go down one more. Now, this is the annual histogram from 1885. It is all years ending in zero by month, and this is the expected return. In other words, the probability the market will be up multiplied by the percentage up or down. And as you can see, the first five months of the year have a negative return, or five of the first six months have a negative return. The only month that has historically shown a positive return is March. And in fact, only one, two, three, four, five of the months show a positive return. So again, that's the wow. expected return for each month. In other words, if the market uh, is up 40% of the time for a 0.1% loss, then you're getting, uh, uh, you would get 0 0.4 on the left axis. So mm -hmm. essentially, I don't see, uh, and uh, l well, let's just go down <clears throat> more. Here are some okay. facts about January. In an election year, the DJI has risen in January 45.5% of the time for zero return. In a year ending in zero, the DJI has risen in January in only 38.5% of all cases for an average loss of 1.4%. And in the six election years that have also occurred in years ending in zero, which is what this will be, 
the DGA has risen two years out of six for an average return of 0.8%, a minus 0.8%. So if we look at the election year, if we look at the decennial pattern, if we combine the two, we get a negative return for the month of January. So as we know, as the cycle dates approach, the market should somehow reflect what we're seeing. In other words, a bullish sentiment would be uh, – I mean the one thing that is very definitely not bearish here is momentum. Momentum is great. The markets are at new highs. The advanced decline line is at new highs. <clears throat> but, you know, I in the background here, and let me – I have uh, – I have when I'm in the States, I have CNBC on every day or Bloomberg, and they usually at least have one doom and gloom guy. They haven't had – they've all been washed away in the last month. And um, – so the first item on page nine, for most of the year, I've been pointing out that hedge funds were underexposed to stocks. Historically, that has led to high returns. If you remember, when I was on earlier in the year, I was saying, you know, at, the, the, at June 30th, they were up 6 or 8%. They had just left out. Mm -hmm. uh, they had uh, not participated in the stock rally. So now their exposure has risen to the highest level in years. A rush to catch up to the market is the sign of a top. You can also see this if you mm -hmm. go to the Rydex family of mutual funds. As everyone knows, they have long funds and they have inverse funds. If you divide one by the other, that ratio of assets in bullish versus bearish funds is near all-time highs, while the percentage of cash held in the money market fund just hit an all-time low over the last 25 years. And against this backdrop, you have AA, that's American Association of Individual Investors. Their sentiment remains very optimistic. I think it's 42 percent bullish. And the recent cycle, the NAAIM, that's um, investment managers, reveals they are heavily exposed to stocks with a high degree of confidence. I could have filled up another two pages, Larry, with the premiums paying, people are paying on uh, call options and um, other items. But, you know, they just uh, – somebody just paid $120,000 for a banana taped to a wall as a work of art. <laughs> <laughs> and Babe Ruth's bat I saw, just sold. I saw that in the news. news. Yeah, Babe, yeah, Babe Ruth's bat sold for an outrageous amount. I went to Thanksgiving dinner and I sat with two art experts at the table with other people, and two of them were saying, "We've never seen such high prices paid for mediocre art." In other words, the high-priced art has zoomed so much it's let you know, you know the poor the poor millionaires and the poor billionaires now have to buy the crummy art because the expensive art is so high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. It's amazing. Yeah. We'll take a little break here, and we'll yeah. have you back for right. another segment. Would that be okay, Bill? Sure. Uh, okay, folks, Bill Meridian, Cycles Research. We'll be right back after we pay a few bills. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. What would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom 
Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, folks, we're back with Bill Meridian of Cycles Research. Bill, the people on Wall Street must be listening to your uh, show today here because the stocks have just broken about 100 points in the Dow. Here's the uh, chart of the notes, I guess. Is that the one you'd like to cover next? Yeah, oh, I didn't even notice that change. My uh, back's to the TV. Um, well, I just wanted to finish that, that story. I was at that... Uh, at that dinner, mm -hmm. and the price of um, mediocre art is soaring because there's just uh, the point I'm trying to make is the Fed has stuffed so much money into the system that everybody has enough money to buy anything. And um, here, I live outside of Princeton, New Jersey, and I bought this place in 2012. So I decided just to look around to see what's happening. And one of these units, the, the type that I'm sitting in, just um, sold for three and a half times what I paid for it in 2012. Oh, my goodness. 3.5 3. times what I paid just seven and a half years ago. And I have a friend who develops real estate in New York, New Jersey. He said he's in Philadelphia because that's where it's most reasonable. And he made bids on uh, three buildings. And, um, you know, I've been asking him, you know, over the last two months, how is that going over two or three months? The people will not come down in price which tells you what? It tells you that people who are holding real estate are expecting it to go higher. And if you take contrary opinion and apply that, now the real estate cycle, which is not part of this, maybe I'll do that next time, does not peak until about 2022, 2023, which tells us if stocks are going down, then maybe that money is going to find its way into, uh, into real estate. So I don't think real estate holders have much to be uh, much to worry about, but when I was in New York and I, you know, I walk around my old neighborhood, NYU Greenwich Village, and there is so much empty retail store space, it's really unbelievable. And uh, at one corner on Bleecker Street, all four corner stores are vacant. And in fact, there have been articles about a retail, a retail space a glut crisis, I think they called it in the newspaper. And uh, in fact, a friend of mine just bought a building for $2.1 million and put her new art studio in Bushwick, Brooklyn pushing out further. Now, Bushwick is starting to become like Greenwich Village. It's starting to uh, have high-end um, high end um, venues. And in fact, they have one, uh, they have a, there's a place, just to give you an idea of how much money is floating around if you have it, they have uh, Duane Park, which is at Bleecker Street in the Bowery. Um, a reservation on a Saturday night, booked up a couple weeks in advance, is 150 bucks per person. It's French-style burlesque club. You have burlesque and you get a very nice dinner and we started talking to one of the dancers and she said well there's another venue out in bushwick i'm doing and that's dancers singers acrobats the cheapest ticket is 150 bucks the um uh, elite ticket is 450 dollars with unlimited champagne and meanwhile on the other end of the spectrum there's plenty of empty retail store space in manhattan only a subway right away how's that for a contrast 
So if you want to go down one to bonds. Sure. You got it. We're ready. So here's the, here's the bond market projection. And look, it peaked right on the sell signal back in November. And that is the monthly note. So this is why I turned in my report. I turned bearish for the month of, of uh, December. And I'm remaining bearish because the new letter will go out uh, in the next day or two. And let's now look at the monthly bond histogram. And you see you're in the weakest part of the cycle. In fact, January is usually up, but the dynamic cycle points down. And there's no help from the seasonal cycle. You can see March is the most bearish month. So between here and the end of March, I think, uh, you know, I would not be wanting to, to buy bonds. I would lighten up on my holdings if I were an institutional uh, fund manager. And let's take a look at gold. And as we can see, gold is going into its best seasonality. The, these figures are from 1969, by the way, 1969 to the present. So it's 51 years. You'll see January and February are the weakest, uh, the uh, strongest months, and then the seasonality uh, peaks out. So now let's overlay on this the uh, dynamic cycles. And here we go the um, weekly cycle on top bottoms January 4th and the monthly cycle on the bottom uh, bottoms January 8th or so but gold is already rising so gold looks pretty bullish and if you want an objective on it we go to the next slide which is a slide I've featured before if you just count that uh, you make a projection from the formation from which gold broke out I get sixteen hundred and fifty dollars so I think we'll be there by February well, it's, we're certainly moving pretty fast this last week, for sure. That's uh, started yeah. in the right direction. You've well, been bullish on that for quite some time also. Yeah. And That's, if we can uh, go down, down down one more, reasons. Now, here's what I said before. Oh. I couldn't remember. Uh, the bat that Babe Ruth used to hit his 500th career home one was auctioned off two weeks ago in Southern California <laughs> for more than $1 million. And then I mentioned the banana tape to the wall. I mean, that's I could give you a bunch of examples from the world of art, but that's just one. And um, other reasons, reasons not to be cheerful here. There's a mountain of debt in China, the Great Wall of Debt. This is uh, uh, from Bloomberg. And it shows China borrows face mounting debt maturing in 2020. And you could, that's the debt that's maturing. Now let's go to the next slide. And this is Chinese bond defaults at a high in 2018 projected to also be quite high in 2019. And um, Pluto in the horoscope for China is going over Jupiter five times. The last two times are September and October of 2020. And that is exactly when the panic cycle, which is not part of this presentation, I've shown it before, that's exactly when it peaks. So uh, I think uh, one of the fundamentals that they will point to it is you and I know, Larry, when when the market goes up or down, they reach for either the um, the vat of bullish news or the vat of bearish news, trying to inform listeners why the market is up or down. I think problems in China with the Chinese economy contracting will be number one. Uh, number two, I think sometime in the, before uh, February is out, you're going to read of problems in Saudi Arabia. Uh, a lot of people there are upset with the uh, the new king, the young guy, is very liberal, and a lot of the older uh, folks don't like that. And then in June, I think the uh, Hong Kong crisis is going to boil over again, but this time I think China is going to become much more heavy-handed and repressive and probably a lot of arrests. And uh, that's another item that the news won't like. And in the second half of the year, I think by uh, the fourth quarter, India and Pakistan will be fighting over Kashmir again. And outside of that, I see lots of help wanted signs and everybody in the building trade here in northern New Jersey, New York or Connecticut are very busy, uh, especially uh, in New York. They're doing a lot of renovations. Uh, everybody's got too much work. So I can't say that the economy uh, is uh, very weak in certain areas and um, some new innovations. My friend had dinner with a guy who's going around buying uh, vacant shopping centers. And he's converting them into transportation points for Amazon. So, in other words, they're uh, wow. you know, the uh, their storage facilities and trucking facilities for Amazon 
they become vacant, of course, due to Amazon. So that's one of the new trends I picked hey, up. <clears throat> sure. Hey, thanks for joining us, my friend. I posted your information, uh, how they can reach you okay. and everything. One question. Do you have any thoughts on Bitcoin? No, I don't. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. To you, sir, you buddy. May bye God bye. bless. You bet. Bye-bye. Bill Meridian, folks, Cycles Research. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls to sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. And I wanted to thank Bill Marini again for being on. It's always a joy talking to him. But see somebody that has been bullish, uh, both stocks and bonds, the switch is very, very important. And that's... I think we were glad to have him on. Whether he's going to be right or not, you know, I really don't know. So we'll just have to uh, wait and see. Okay, we'll see what's happening with these markets here. Uh, we got Apple down a little bit. So um, if you did that Apple trade, what you could do, folks, if you wanted to really play it close to the vest, put your stop at break even if you like. That's, uh, we're leaving our stop at, uh, at 299, and we'll see what happens with this puppy. It will go from there. Uh, I think some of the things that Bill talked about, about those bonds, is really important because of what we're seeing in our market. You know, folks, they've been feeding this this stuff. Uh, <laughs> they call it caviar, but it's not what it is. It's uh, fish eggs. And I'll tell you, because uh, these negative interest rate thing is going to, history books are going to be look at that and say they did, they said what? But that's my two cents worth, whether that's going to be uh, the, the key or not. Someone's asked me to comment about the uh, the British pound. 
that I was talking about just a little while ago, and I was just doing uh, some research that we've been doing with um, uh, John Jameson. You know that big number we had up there was the big 786 number at that 135.10. The number was 134.65. It broke a 500 points. It's now rallied back to the 382 retracement at 131.42. And uh, uh, that is uh, whether it's going to be a good one or not. You know, we have to wait and see, but uh, that's uh, that's neither here nor there. So let's keep a, a close eye on that one. Uh, also, remember, the euro has got some really strong resistance up here. It's trading right back at that 618 again uh, right now. So if it pops above it, that means the U.S. dollar is probably going to go lower. Uh, tomorrow, we'll have the regular show. I don't know if there's going to be regular hours in the market or not. Uh, and I want to wish everybody a happy new year that's not going to be here tomorrow. I will be traveling on Thursday. I'll see you guys on Friday. And uh, we'll have another great show then. I'm hoping to have Richard Mogi on right after the first of the year. He's in retirement, but he's going to come out and chat with us a little bit. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. <laughs>